Hello, welcome. Come on in. Let's go to church. Well, this may not be exactly what you're used to, but something is wonderful, and that is through technology we get to be together today. There are some things in life that we have control over, and there's other things that we do not. So our separation today is something that we do not have control over. But the great news is this, that the church is not limited to walls in a building. So today you're out in your homes, you're out in the community, and listen, Jesus says, that's okay, because you are salt and light wherever you are. But we do love this verse. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And that's what this is. It's his house. It's our church. It's our time to come together and bring wonder and praise and glory to Jesus Christ. God bless. Let's go to church. Good morning, church. Today's scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 18. And I'll be reading it for us. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but yet not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen, since we see what is temporary, but what we don't see is eternal. Church, in times like these, it's important to recognize the scripture and its authority and its words when it says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Outwardly, we are wasting away, but inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Let this be our motto as we go about these times of trouble, and hardship. And always remember that Christ has overcome it all and that we do not go through this alone. We are brothers and sisters in Christ and we are a family. Love you. When I was 20 years old, I was pretty sure that I was going to live forever. But as I got older, I began to realize that I too was made of dust and clay. You know, there are all kinds of adversities that I have been through in the past two years. I had a heart attack, I lost my voice, my blood pressure went sky high. There were all kinds of things to deal with, a tooth infection. But as time has gone along, instead of seeing these things as a curse, I begin to see them as a blessing. Because what they did was they reminded me that I am made of dust and clay. And that dust and clay is a way of reminding me that God has blessed me with many, many, many good things. He has been very good to me. I never appreciated my wife nearly as much as when I was laying in that hospital bed and she rubbed my head to take away my headaches. I remember how she did errands for me, and she took care of the kids, and she took care of the church. 
She is a huge blessing. And I thought about my children. How I wanted so desperately just to see them, to talk to them, to not take them for granted. I, I thought about worship and how I wanted so bad just to be back in church and to sing. These are the days of Elijah. I thought about the prayers of Pastor Betts and, and how I wanted to hear that voice again and how it would soothe me. It brought me comfort. You know, the, being reminded that we are made out of dust and clay is not bad. It's good. It's really good. Because if we come to a realization that we are not immortal, but that we have come from the dust into the dust, we will one day return. Then we begin to treat these things as blessings. We begin to realize that God has created a beautiful vessel out of this dust and out of this clay. Secondly, the scripture says that this vessel holds a great treasure. Back in Paul's day, the, what, they would take uh, their, their coins and they would put them in jars and then they would bury them. But like people often do, they forget where they buried them. So to this day, when people are digging in Israel, guess what they find? They find jars. And they open these cracked jars up, and what do they see? They see coins of gold and silver. And then they have a treasure. And Paul says that we have a treasure in this heart, in, in our hearts, in this jar of clay. And even though it's in on the inside, we should be able to let it out, to let people see it. What a beautiful, awesome treasure that God has given to you. His treasure is the resurrected Son of Jesus. He lives within your heart. If you have faith in Him, if you believe in Him, if you have received Him, He's with you wherever you go. And yes... You might have a cracked pot, but that's okay. We all have cracks. We all have deficiencies. We all have trouble and hardship and difficulty. But listen, on the inside, we have the rejuvenating spirit of Jesus Christ. And listen, the scripture says there's nothing in all of creation that will be able to take it away. It says danger, evil, Death or life, the present or the future, or any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is super great news. Paul goes on to say that this same power who resurrected Jesus from the grave also resides within you. It is at work within you. And because it is at work in you, you can give the credit and the glory to Jesus. When you are facing these difficulties and you are facing these adversities, you have to rely upon that strength. You have to go down deep inside and say, Jesus, you are my hope. You are the reason I get up in the morning. You are the reason that I do what I do. And Jesus says, do your good deeds in such a way that they will see it, and then they will praise your Father who is in heaven. So, during these hard times, let the love of Jesus, that treasure, come out. Show People, that Jesus lives within you. Don't act like the people in the stores who are, who are stealing toilet paper and hoarding and, 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 and fighting over material things. Look around you. Give hope. Give this treasure that resides within your heart, in your spirit, in your soul to a world that is lost and hungry and searching. We are called to let the treasure shine.
a lesson. Paul also says that he was knocked down, but he wasn't knocked out. That he was, he was pushed, but he wasn't going to give up. Many years ago, when Daniel first started to play football, he weighed 120 pounds. And he, he started as a center. He played against guys that weighed 300 pounds. And I said to Daniel, listen, you can take it or you can give it. But if you lay down, they're going to run all over you all day. So don't lay down. If you get knocked down, you get back up. Whatever you are facing, however big that guy is, you just get back up and you give it right back to him. The devil, he's going to do everything he can to knock you down. But you are not defeated. You are not defeated. If you would just get back up, you have to realize greater is he who is within you than he who is in the world. Whatever you are facing, you might be knocked down, but you're not knocked out. Get up, rise up, confront him in the name of Jesus. And say to him, you get behind me. I go to visit John Willett. John is facing a very difficult period. He's lost use of his legs and a lot of his hands. And sometimes he gets discouraged. Who wouldn't? But... He reaches down inside, and he finds that faith in Jesus. And he tells me, Pastor Dave, I'm going to walk again. He tells me that with, with, with what Jesus has done for him in the past, he's convinced that he will deliver him again. And you know what I say? I say, that's right. Fight it. Keep your courage. Look inside at, at this treasure, this resurrected Jesus. Listen, as we face these very uncertain days, you need to be assured, be very assured that Jesus is your rock. He's your Savior. And even though we live in this jar, inside is this treasure. It is worth more than anything. What would you trade for that treasure of Jesus? There's nothing. There's nothing that I would trade for him. And so, even though there is difficulty, even though there is adversity, even though there is hardship, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I'm just going to close out in prayer really quick. So if you bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. Thank you that um, we can still communicate with you and worship you and just come together before you. And um, we want to thank you for all that you've done and help us to remain calm through this chaotic time and just um, be with us for the rest of the day. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. And I hope that the rest of your day is fantastic.